Hi, I'm Zach Zacharias. I'm the Senior Curator of Education and History at the Museum of Arts and Sciences in Daytona Beach. But today, I'm actually in Hot Springs, South Dakota, and it's absolutely beautiful up here. I'm actually up here on a dinosaur hunt uh, looking for fossils, but today I'm doing an excursion to a museum called the World Fossil Finders Museum. It's owned by an avocational paleontologist named Frank Garcia, who's actually from Florida, and he's one of the most famous avocational paleontologists from Florida because of his amazing discoveries. He came up here and not long after that, he discovered a complete tylosaur. Now what's a tylosaur? Well, let's go to his museum and find out what a tylosaur actually is. here at the World Fossil Finder Museum in Hot Springs and I'm standing in front of a 93 million year old tylosaur, which is a type of mosasaur. It lived in the late Cretaceous period. Let's check out this awesome museum. Tylosaurus is from the ancient Greek word meaning knob lizard. It's a genus of mosasaur, a large meat-eating predatory marine reptile that is closely related to modern monitor lizards and snakes. This arrow marks a very unusual characteristic of the tylosaurus. It's an elongated conical rostrum that protrudes from its snout from which the genus is named. Unlike typical mosasaurs, Tylosaurus did not have teeth up to the end of the snout, nor on the bony protuberance that is its rostrum. And scientists believe that this feature was primarily used for combative purposes such as ramming other mosasaurs. <laughs> This Tylosaurus is the largest, most complete, and a world record. It was dug up by a native Floridian, avocational paleontologist Frank Garcia, right here in the Badlands of South Dakota. Preserved stomach contents indicate a diet heavy on fish, but seabirds, sharks, plesiosaurs, and other mosasaurs also failed to escape the Tylosaur's lethal grip. The Tylosaur had an amazing 83 vertebrae in its tail, and it relied on that tail for its locomotion. This is an awesome museum with incredible ancient fossilized animals. Let's take a look at all the other fossils that are on display at the World Fossil Finder Museum.
So tell me what you guys do in here. Tell me what you guys do. Well, this is the prep lab, and we uh, we take fossils from the ground, um, remove them in plaster jackets. This one is all cleaned off, and now it needs to be reconstructed. But we do the first stage of prep, which is removing the sand from the bones and the jacket. Um, and this is a vertebrae column from a, a duck-billed dinosaur, a juvenile. This was collected in the Faith, South Dakota area in the Hell Creek Formation. Um, pretty rare to have an articulation like that. But. So yeah, this is the this is where all the magic happens, where we prep fossils into their stabilized condition, and then they can be displayed and studied. They don't they don't come out looking like the stuff on the display there where it's all fancy and nice and shiny. It takes a lot of work to get something like this to display quality where we can put it on the museum floor. A lot of work. <laughs> it was quite an honor to meet the legendary world fossil finder himself, Frank Garcia. Let's find out more about how he discovered this amazing specimen. Frank, I gotta ask you a question. How in the world did you stumble upon this incredible tylosaur? Long story is short. Moved up here eight or nine years ago from Florida. I always wanted to find a mosasaur, but I'm retired. I've already found everything there is to be found. 30 new animals to science. I've had several named for me. And while I was in town at Edgemont, my wife and I moved there, and uh, we heard about a guy in town named Gary Brown, and he was a fossil collector. And they said, you should make friends with them. I said, well, all right, I'm really not interested in really doing a lot of fossil hunt anymore because I've done enough already. So I friended Gary, and uh, I asked him this. I said, you know, I always wanted to find a mosasaur vertebrae. Can't find them in Florida because that's Cretaceous, and that was underwater during the dinosaur period. But they're up here. And Gary said, yes, there's a spot about four miles from town here, and it's a private ranch, and we have access to it, and I'll take you there. So he took me there one afternoon, and... Uh, I get out of my Toyota truck on the left and he gets out on the right and on the right side of the dirt road there, there's a Pierre shale and it looks almost like this back here. That's what this Pierre shale looks like. It's shaly and it's flaky, it's soft. And he says, you can find them there. Or to my left there was Pierre shale also. So I said, well, I'm on the left, you're on the right, you go right, I go left. I said, okay, so I went left. And after about an hour, I wasn't finding anything. And then all of a sudden I found the top parts of this vertebral column up there. All eroded, busted up. And I looked at it and I said, wow, you know, I wanted to find a Mosasaur vertebrae. Those are monsters, but they're all busted up. But I got my knife out and I said, you know, as a trained paleontologist, I'm an investigator. I'm a pretty good sleuth. So among other things, so I got my knife and stuck it in the ground and I could feel two or three inches down. I could feel almost like concrete. I said, yeah, I bet that's the rest of the animal. So Gary and I started digging and sure enough, we exposed like 60 or 70 vertebrae. The next day, I bring my wife over, and my wife and I are digging, and so is Gary. Gary's around where the tail is. My wife and I are right over there where the rib cage is. And right here where the skull is, of course, it's not exposed, not shown. My wife says, you know, I think I know where that skull is. I said, really? She says, look at that aloe plant up there about six, seven feet. And I said, well, all right. She said, dig underneath it. So I went and dug underneath the aloe plant, and I looked at her and I said, you were right, there's the skull. And she came over and dug with me and it was just the thrill of our life to dig the biggest, best Tylosaur skull. This thing is five feet long. It's unnamed Tylosaur. So yeah, so I call it Debbie Sue after, after my wife. I figured, you know, she deserves to have this thing named after her. So happy wife, happy life. It was a great day at the World Fossil Finder Museum in Hot Springs, South Dakota, and seeing the amazing Tylosaur and all the other amazing fossil specimens.